last video, I'm going to be putting together some questions with answers to test your ability and practice naming organic compounds. But I will show you how to name all the different functional groups. So alkanes are easy. They are the single bonds, obviously, and they are methane, ethane, propane, butane, and so on. Alkenes are the same in terms of naming. So if I had, for example, this here, that would be ethene. And if I do this, and put a methyl group there, then I now make propene. Propene, no gap, right? Propene. If I do this and add another carbon here, I've now made butene. But be careful, if you just write this, then you're not going to get it right because now the double bond has two options. It could be in between the first and second carbon. Again, you can start either end or it could be between the second and third and you have to distinguish them. Now, the way to do that is by putting a number in. Since this double bond is attached to carbon one, it's obviously two as well, but you don't have to put both numbers in. Since it's attached to carbon one, we put a one there. The other option would be to call it but one e They're both correct. If on the other hand, you did this and put a triple bond in, then putting a triple bond in, you would have to take off two hydrogens. Otherwise, carbon is gonna to have too many bonds to it. So the triple bond turns this into an alkyne. And just like we had a moment ago, but one ene, this would be but one ine or one butine. Let's put some other functional groups in. So let's put a chlorine in and do that and put a hydrogen there to make the carbon up to four. So this now is a haloalkane, a chloroalkane. The longest line of carbons is four, which makes it a butane. Notice ane because there's no double bonds, they're all single bonds. The chlorine, and this is one of the exceptions, if you like, to the rule, the halogens are used as prefixes. Chlorine becomes chloro, so I'm going to put chloro, chlor. Chloro, it's all one word, no gaps. Chlorobutane, but still not quite finished yet because with four carbons, there's more than one place the chlorine can go. At the moment, it's on carbon number two, but it could have easily been on carbon number one. In order to make sure that this is the structure, two chlorobutane. All right, let's change this to an OH group. Let's put an OH there. And now we have an alcohol. And again, as I say, except for the halogens, all of them tend to be as suffixes at the end of the word. But to, to name an alcohol is really easy. First of all, we have four carbons, so it's but. Now it would be butane, but what we do, we drop the E, of butane, not the ain, just the e, and add the ending ol. And since the OH is on carbon 2, it's 2 butanol or butan 2 ol. Again, whichever you prefer. All right, the next functional groups are the aldehydes and the ketones. Now then, the aldehyde or the ketone is containing a carbon double bond O. It's called a carbonyl group. So in order for that to happen, I'm going to take away the hydrogens that were there. So now you can see there's four bonds there. This is a ketone. And the reason it's a ketone, and I'm going to show you what would happen if you did this. If you did this and put the double bond O there, so we basically swapped places there, what we've now got is an aldehyde. 
So the carbonyl group, the C double bond O, if it's the final carbon, is an aldehyde. That means there'll be a hydrogen attached. And if it's not the final carbon, if it's somewhere in the middle of the chain, can't be on either end, but if it's in the middle of the chain, it's a ketone. To name aldehydes and ketones, again, take the alkane, butane, drop the E, add the ending own. Take the alkane, butane, drop the E, add the ending al. Butanone, butanal. Okay? If your writing is a little bit dodgy, please, please be careful that you make it clear that it's an A there. Because if you put anything that looks like an O, that then looks like butanol, which is, of course, the alcohol. Then we have the carboxylic acids. Now, the carboxylic acids will have this group, COOH. To name this, again, we start with our carbon number, which is, this case is propan. So you take the alkane, drop the E, add the ending, oic acid. This is the first naming that has a gap. Up till now, no spaces. Propanoic acid is two separate words. On the other hand, if I do this, instead of a hydrogen there, let's put another carbon. Oops, let's get a little bit clearer, CH3. If I do that, what I've now done is turn the carboxylic acid into an ester. Now to name an ester, a lot of people find this difficult, it needn't be. To name an ester, what we have here, this portion here, let's do this in different colour, this portion here has come from the carboxylic acid, and this portion here has come from an alcohol. Now the alcohol would have been methanol, because it's got one carbon. And the carboxylic acid would have been propanoic acid. To name the ester, we start by taking the methyl from the methanol. So this is methyl. From methanol. If that was two carbons, it would be ethyl, three propyl, four butyl, and so on. And then from the carboxylic acid, propanoic becomes propanoate. Now, again, to recognize it, obviously you've got to realize that this part here is the ester group. And this bit came from the carboxylic acid, and this bit came from the alcohol. Be careful, because sometimes they may be a little bit naughty and do something like this. Let's say they do, I'm going to draw this one out, CH3, CH2, O, CO, and then uh, CH3. Now you will see I've reversed that group if that's the case, this bit is now from the alcohol and this bit is from the carboxylic acid. Do you want to try and name this before I say it? This came from the alcohol, this came from the carboxylic acid. The alcohol gives us the first part of the name, the carboxylic acid gives us the second part of the name. Well, there's two carbons from the alcohol. Pause it if you don't want to hear the answer. This is ethyl. There's two carbons from the carboxylic acid, so that would have been ethanoic acid. Now it would become ethanoate, and this then is ethyl ethanoate. Again, there'll be lots of practice of these and all the other functional groups in the question book that I'm producing. That covers all of the hydrocarbon types and all of the oxygen-containing functional groups. The three remaining ones are the ones that contain nitrogen, and the first of them are the amines, CH3, CH2, 
NH2. This now is an amine. The, the number of carbons is 2, which again gives us ethan. Drop the E like we've done now with so many of the others and add the ending amine. Ethan amine. If you go to three carbons, you'll need a number like propan 1 amine or propan 2 amine because the amine could obviously go in more than one place. If I do this, and put a double bond O, and then attach the NH2, I have turned the amine into an amide. And again, very easy to name, instead of ethanamine, it becomes ethanamide. Now, if you then increase the number to three, you don't need a number. It would still be propanamide, because this group has to be on the very end. There's only one bond, so it can't be in the middle of the chain. The same thing applies to carboxylic acids. You never need a number for them. Aldehydes, you never need a number for them. They can only be the final carbon. All right, and the final function, functional group that you need to know about is this one, CH3CN. Now that is ch 3 c triple bond N. This is called a nitrile. And to name a nitrile, again, is very easy. Ethan, nitrile. Now, you can see I've left a little bit of gap there, right? And that's because they usually keep the E in. Rather than run two ends together, they call it ethane nitrile. Would the ethan nitrile be wrong? No. It's just they usually keep the E in. So don't worry about that, that's minor. And that is all the functional groups, how to name them. There's nothing now, but practice is needed, obviously, and there'll be loads and loads and loads of examples of all different functional groups with side chains, without side chains, different length chains, branches, some going that way, some going this way, and so on, in the booklet I'm gonna be producing. So that will give you plenty of practice.